Thank you, Miss Patty. You know, one of the greatest things that we have in Christ is sometimes we feel like that we're alone and we have no hope that we can have confidence in Christ. And in issues within our life, when fears and even failures and disappointments take place, who do you hold on to? What are the things that you struggle with? And sometimes our insecurities, our lack of confidence, we hold on to the things that crumble in our hands. We try to stand on ground that is shaking. And then when catastrophes take place, we don't know what to stand on. And everything that we have, whether it's our job in Wichita, or whether it's our family, junk happens and we don't know what to do. And I couldn't tell you how many times this week, just this week, whether it was on the phone or whether it was a Starbucks coffee, talking to somebody that's getting ready to lose a family member or that just lost a dad, what do they hold on to? And they're struggling and they're crying and they could care less who sees them and they don't know what to do and they're just beside themselves. And as a pastor, I have to come alongside them and say, oh, it's going to be okay. But deep down, they're hurting and they're fearful of tomorrow and they don't know what to do. So when I'm thinking about when catastrophes rise, when junk happens, who do we hold on to? And we, we would all say, we hold on to the power of God. Jesus is the rock. And yes, that's absolutely the right answer. But when junk is falling apart in your faith and in your life and your ground is crumbling underneath you and you don't know what to do, just to say the name Jesus is hard to do. What we have to do is we have to have some confidence within our life. Is what we believe real? Is who I believe in real? Is it something that I go to church and I hear about Jesus and I sing some songs? Or when catastrophe takes place, is Jesus my confidence? Or is he just something that I do? And we have to have confidence that when things of life are out of our control, when we don't understand, when we think everything's falling apart, do we have the confidence that Jesus is real in my faith and in my life. Because when Jesus is not the true confidence, then something else takes that place. And when something else takes the confidence in the place of Christ, that something else will crumble in the face of an adversary. It will die. Our feet will lose ground the thing that we hold on to will be loosened through our hands, whether it is our job, or whether it is our family, or whether it is our resources. Whatever we hold on to for our confidence will fail us if it is not in the confidence of Christ. Nothing more opened my eyes more than this week when a good friend of mine was shaken to his core about his life as he knows it, is about ready to change drastically. Sitting in hospice care, and his wife is about ready to die. His life, as he knows it, has changed. He's been a preacher his entire life. He could tell you the scriptures and upon scriptures upon scriptures about what to do and how to do it. And he can counsel you how to go through death. He could tell you what to do. He's been doing funerals. He could go to the hospital room and he can pray with you. But you know what? When sometimes when God flips the switch and you're the one and you say, what do I do? His confidence can't be in what he does. His confidence and your confidence has to be in who we have it has to be something solid and concrete. So after sitting with him and talking to him, you know, I've been on a series on uh, a healthy church and, and talking about the vision and the purpose of the church and how to move forward. And all that stuff is great, and I'm excited about that. I, I love talking about the power and the future and the energy and, and the future of Glenville. 
But today I, I've switched gears. Starting um, Thursday, I started thinking about something that uh, is important to me, and I, I hope it's important to you. And it, it is talking about confidence. Not me being confident, but who am I confident in? Because if I'm confident in my own self, I will fail miserably. But if I'm confident in Christ, I can be successful ultimately. The feeling or belief that one can rely on someone or something firm or trustworthy. Do I have confidence in something? And I have to have confidence in a firm foundation of Jesus Christ. When I'm going through things, I have to realize that my faith is firm. That my confidence in Christ is real. So there's a few things in the Bible that uh, as I was doing my study, I, I just wanted to share with you. And this is not really a, a sermon for say. It's really just a Bible study that, that I'm trying to help out a few buddies of mine. And uh, when we're talking about things, this is the study that we're going through. The first thing is a confident hope. We have to have a confident hope. Uh, in Psalm chapter 127, verses 1 through 3, it says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came up upon me, teed my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war should rise against me. It, this will I be confident in. I will be confident that I don't have to have fear of the things around me. I can have confidence in Christ. All the world, tragedies, issues that take place, I can have confidence that God is going to protect me. He doesn't tell me I'm not going to go through it. But he, what he's going to do, he's going to wrap his arms around me in it. I don't want him to protect me. I know junk is going to take place. I know catastrophes are going to happen. But as a child of God, just like I had to do to my father, just what I want to do to my sons, when junk happens, I want to say, Dad, help me. And the Bible says it's called Abba Father. Daddy! I need you, and there's nothing greater than a dad would just say, son, okay, I will protect you. I know life is going to happen. I know stuff is going to take place, but I have confidence in my hope that Christ will be in the midst of my issues. I can deal with it when I know that I'm not dealing with it by myself. I need to have that confidence in hope. And then a confident anticipation. A confident anticipation. Death. It is, it's hard. Sometimes life is hard. But dealing with somebody that you love, that is going to die, or that has died, many times the only time we hear the scripture is at a funeral. And when we hear the scripture at a funeral, we're saying, Okay, that's what he has to say because that's, that's, that's trying to give hope and security in the midst of a failure or in the midst of a funeral. But there's a scripture that I tell you that has to give us the most confidence in the world of an anticipation of what happens next. When, you, when, when you're ministering to somebody, when somebody's going through issues, do you have confidence that I have an anticipation that after this, after this issue, after this calamity, after everybody leaves, and I'm by myself, where do I turn in the scriptures to get confidence and hope that it's going to be okay? The preacher's gone. My family's gone. All I have is a light bulb and my iPad with a Bible program on it, and I don't know what to do with it. Where do you go? Let me give you the scripture. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 6 through 10, it says, Therefore we are always confident knowing that with we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Therefore we labor that we would present yet absent. We may be we may accept it by him, for we shall all appear before the king, the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone will receive the things done in his body according to that which he has done, whether it be good or or bad. What is all that saying? How can I be excited about the future? It means everything that we do has a purpose. And the Bible says that 
although each and every one of us, we are going to die, every one of us. And what we do now has impact on what we do in the future. We will be judged by every action that we perform and everything that we do. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all of our unrighteousness. And when God looks at us and he sees his son Jesus, he died on the cross for our sins, and he looks at us, we are righteous in God's eyes, granted. But the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. It just says, you're going to die. And if you have your faith in Christ, here's my hope. That the last breath that you take and the last time you shut your eyes or before you go into that coma and you're checked out of this world, be prepared because it's important to understand what you do today impacts and eternity. Be, understand that we will be judged. Here's the greatest thing about the judging though. For a child of God, for me, when I was 19 years of age, I was judged. I was judged from all the junk that I did before I was saved. And I was judged for everything I was going to do after I got saved. And you know what? Jesus put upon my life, paid in full. I could not do what I do if I had to live up to the standard that you put on me. But here's what it is. Jesus has forgiven me. I have an anticipation. I don't have to be perfect. I have to have confidence in him that he's going to love me in my failures. And knowing that, I can have anticipation. We're all going to die and we're going to stand before God and God is going to be our judge. But for those that love Jesus and have already accepted him, we've already been judged and we've been found innocent. But if we have never accepted him, we will stand before God. And the Bible says, every knee shall confess and every tongue shall bow. No, every knee shall bow and every tongue, I get it right. Every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. Everyone will bow their knee before Christ. Every one of us. Whether you do it today or you do it at the judgment, you will bow your knee. You will realize that Jesus is the Lord. Whether it's for your salvation or whether it's for your judgment. But every knee will bow. I want to have anticipation and confidence that I've done that and done it right. And then confident ministry. Talking to people in the ministry. Preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence. No man forbidding him to do his will. My job, our job, is with confidence. Do the ministry the calling that God has put upon your life. Having confidence that whatever you do, ministry is not preaching. Ministry is not music. Ministry can be anything that you do in the name of Christ. Anytime that you talk to somebody, anytime that you witness to somebody, anytime that you share your faith, anytime that you serve in the nursery, anything that you do for the cause of Christ is ministry. And God wants to say, I want to give you confidence that what you're doing is making an impact. What you're doing is important. Joey's testimony. He was 21 years of age. He wasn't in church, and then Justin invited him to come to church. And he said, he said we made an impact within his life. Joe, Joe is here today. His father is here today. He comes to church. You know, making an impact in someone's life is ministry. You may say, well, I don't know if I'm impacting anybody's life. You know what? You will never know whether you've impacted somebody's life until you see the end of their life and they stand before God and God looks at you and says, you've done something, you've done something well. These people have a relationship with me because of the impact that you've made. But if we do not do ministry, we'll never have the impact. We have to get into people's lives. We have to say what I'm doing is important and how I do it is important. I have to have impact and I know that my ministry is important. And then... Um, this is, this is awesome. Access. I have to know that I have access to God. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 12, it says, In whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. Boldness and confidence to have access. That means all you must do is say, Lord, I need your help. And because you're his child, you have access to God access. You can communicate to God at any time, at any place, 
for any purpose. You don't have to go through me or through anyone. You have the Holy Spirit of God living within your life and you have access to God. So when you're struggling, when you're hurting, you think, oh, I need to call the pastor. You know what? And I want you to. I want to come over and I want to pray with you. I want to minister to you. But you have to know that you have just as much access to God as I do. He loves you just as much as he loves me. He wants to help you just as much as he wants to help me. I want to minister to you, but I cannot do for you what God can do for you. So we have access. We have access that God himself has brought into you, that you have confidence that God loves me enough that he'll let me talk to him without leisure. Whether I have sinned or whether I have failed him, he still loves us. And then a confident trust. In Philippians 1, 6, it says, Being confident of this very thing, that he that which begun a good work in me will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. I have to have confidence that he loves me enough that he's not going to keep me where I am. People sometimes, I sometimes, get very complacent, get very satisfied. And being complacent and satisfied, I said, sometimes I think I'm good enough, or I've done enough, or they're happy with me where I am, and, you know, I don't have to really worry about moving into the future, because I, look how far I've gone. I, I started here, and I'm, I'm here, and if I just, if I just push the button and go on coast mode, I'll be okay for a while. And, you know, we do that in many different avenues of our church, in our life, in our homes, in our kids. We've done so well. But here's what Jesus says. I want you to have confidence in me that if you give me the opportunity to work within your life, I'm going to open up an opportunity that you'll never see. Have confidence. Trust in me that it's a beginning it's a stage, and we're moving on all the way through our life to be who God wants us to be. Have confidence. Don't get disappointed. Don't get distracted. Don't get disappointed when we feel like we're stagnated. Sometimes the barren time of our life is the most profitable time in our life. We feel like there's no hope. We feel like things are falling apart. You know what God is doing? Get your eyes off of yourself. Trust me and let me take you in those barren times and let you understand if you have confidence in your abilities, you will fail. But if you put your confidence in him, he will take you through the barren times into the great times. But sometimes we have to understand, I, I can't do this alone. I need to have the confidence of Christ and trust in him that he'll take us all the way. And then a confident endurance. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of the confidence steadfast unto the end. It's a race. It's a race. We have to have confidence from the start to the finish. We cannot waver. I like this phrase, we have to finish well. We start well, we have to finish well. It's an endurance. And if we endure the race steadfast, Understand that it's not about me, but I can finish the race with Christ. And somebody that you love is going through issues and needs you to love them and help them and encourage them. Maybe your family is going through some issues. Maybe it's your kids going through issues. You have to know that this issue is not the end. This issue is a time in your life that you have to have confidence in Christ. But it will continue. Emily is here today. And Emily is a little baby. Praise God that it's a, it's a miracle to see what God is doing. But um, Emily, um, when, if God doesn't heal her, and Emily passes. Your life can't stop. It's, it, it's going to be the hardest thing you've ever gone through. But life goes on. And you have to take this impact 
that God has given to you and allowed you to go through this barren time and this loving time and this careful time and a time that you have that will never be forgotten from your heart. But you have to take that and you have to move and use what God has given to you during the very difficult times of your life to give your life and pour out to others that what you are going through is going to help and minister to multiple people because there's only a few, a very few people that will ever under, understand what you've gone through and what you're going through. But for those that are going through it, you're going to be a valuable resource. Whether it's a disease, whether it's leukemia, whether it's cancer, or whether it's just some family issues, we have a valuable resource. The issue isn't the end. Unfortunately, sometimes we get so captivated in the issue, we lose sight that God wants to give us hope and help today because there's a purpose for tomorrow. Many people give up. Many people give up. Many people give up because they don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. They quit in life because they have no confidence in Christ. And suicide is a major issue, even in the church today, because we don't have confidence in that Christ is going to help us through the event. And the event becomes so overwhelming that we just quit and we give up. As a believer in Christ, we have to know that my confidence is not in the event, it's not in the tangible, it's not in the issues of life. My confidence has to be in Christ, and he wants to take us through the event for him and through him and give God the glory after it's over. It's hard. It's hard. But our confidence has to be in Christ. It can't be in us. And then... Um, the last one, our confidence in prayer. Our confidence in prayer. In 1 John 5, 14 and 15, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if he knows that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we are desired of him. Now, it doesn't say, it doesn't say that everything we ask is going to be given to us. If it was, there's not one person on this earth that will ever die. Because somebody's always saying, please don't die. There's always saying, I wish this cancer was healed. There's somebody saying, I wish this issue would never take place. I wish I won the lottery. I mean, everything would be answered. But it says here, have this confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, his will, not my will. And we have to have confidence that he is going to do something that we don't understand. His ways are higher than my ways. His thoughts are greater than my thoughts. I don't get it. I don't understand it. I just have to have confidence that when everything is taking place, when I feel like the whole world is falling in on me, when I feel like I do not have the answers for anybody about any topic, I know and I have confidence that I can say, Lord, I need you right now. And I have confidence that he will protect me. I have confidence that he will hear me. And I have confidence that in his will, he will guide me. Where is it that you need God's confidence? Where is it that we struggle. Where is it that God is using you to minister to somebody and you have to have confidence in that ministry? You have to have confidence that, you know what, if I do break that ice and I do share my faith, if I do get into somebody's life, if I do help somebody else, I have to have confidence that I'll have the answers for them. If I am struggling and my, and my feet are on shaky ground and I really don't know what to do, I'm really walking a path that is really not good for me, I have to have confidence that I can step back and I have confidence that God is going to keep me from that cliff. Where are you struggling? Who 
are you needed to minister to? Because our confidence, my hope, my future is not in me. It's in him. And if I have confidence that he loves me enough that he is going to walk me through life and protect me, I have to have confidence that whatever takes place, whatever takes place, he is going to walk beside me in the midst of my darkest time of my life. I wish I could tell you, here's the magic pill, it'll never happen to you. I wish I could say, everything's going to be great once you give your life to Christ. But you know what? It doesn't. All I can tell you is when stuff happens, you have to have confidence that Jesus loves you and he wants to walk beside you through your life. And don't get disappointed. Just say, Lord, I need your help. When David's son died in, in 1 Samuel chapter 17, David got mad at God. He was wondering, God, why, why are you allowing this to take place? See, it, it's okay. God created us as emotional beings. God, God knows that, he, he understands when we get upset, and he understands that anger sometimes, that we don't understand his ways. And if we get upset, he's a big God, and he can handle my fear, and he can handle my anger, and he can handle my tears. And he can wrap his arms around every emotion and he can walk me through it. But here's our issue. If our confidence is in us, we will never rely on him. And if we think we can handle stuff, God is saying, I, I want to help. But you have a will and I will not make you trust in me. I will not make you rely on me. But once you do, once you say, I need you, he'll be the first person to rescue you from the pit of where you are. But do you have confidence that he's going to rescue you and help you in this place? I'm going to ask Joey to make his way up, and we're going to have a song of invitation. Let's have a word of prayer. And in this prayer, I want you to think about where is it that you need God? Where is it that you need that confidence? Who is it that you need to minister to? Where is it in your life that you just need to give your hope over to Christ? Maybe you've never given your life to Christ, and today needs to be a day of your salvation, that you say, right now is a day that I am rescued. I am going to be judged by God today. And if you're judged by God today, you know what? He doesn't put your life on a big screen and let everybody see it. He says, you are saved by faith. You're forgiven of all your sins. All your transgressions are under the blood of Christ, never to be remembered again. That is what forgiveness is all about. And I have confidence that I do not have to stand up and look at all of my life because Jesus has internally forgiven every aspect of my life. I know I'm going to heaven, but I know I'm forgiven today, and I'm confident in that fact. And that's the only way that we can stand up and proclaim the message of Christ if we know without a doubt it is real. Are you confident in that? Are you confident in your forgiveness? Are you confident in God's love and his grace? If you are, minister, share, give hope. Allow him to be the Lord of your life. Let us stand to our feet. Let us respond to this invitation, the opportunity for you to respond. Give God your hope. Give him your confidence. Allow him to work deep within your life. Allow him to share 